Hi there, it's the Common Magician. I want to show you something interesting. I've got a, a dollar bill here. could be a borrowed dollar bill. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but a dollar bill, and if you look at it, a, a dollar bill has its own signature, just like a person does, right? We have our own identity. We all have an individual fingerprint. Uh, when we write our names, we have our own signature, not just the letters and the sequence of the letters, but the way that we write it uh, so that each individual can be identified as an individual. Dollar bills are like that too for security reasons and uh, if you look at this one for example you can um, take up maybe a camera or something I mean we have a camera right here but if I did this with someone I'd have them take out their cell phone and take a quick picture of this bill their bill uh, and it would read uh, here you can see it says I think it says D77 I'm sorry D7331816116 a so you see the serial number on the bill, um, identifying this bill as a very particular, specific, one-of-a-kind bill. I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to take the bill. I'm just going to fold it up very, very slowly, very tightly into a tight little package. And we'll fold it down, crunch it up into a tiny little ball. You'll see we can uh, rub it in it disappears, gone, completely gone, but not too far. If you look right here, I've got my wallet sitting out in the open and it's been sitting here the entire time. And if I open up my wallet, you'll see something interesting sitting in the license window right there. You can see there's a dollar bill. If we take out the bill, you can see the bill is a very particular dollar bill. If we look at it, and if you had a camera on your phone and we took a picture of this, you could compare it, and you would see that we end up with D7331861A. All of the features are the same, same mint, same location, same signature, same series, same serial number. Everything about this is identical to the borrowed bill, and of course it could be returned to the uh, spectator. So um, this is in the... Um, series, this uh, ongoing series I haven't done in a while, haven't, haven't been making new content for it, but uh, the idea of the impossible location. So we've been talking about playing cards in the impossible location, which is what uh, we often think about. Um, but really you can use a lot of different objects for the something to impossible location sort of feat. So what we have is a disappearance or a transposition of a dollar bill, a borrowed dollar bill, to a place in plain sight and the, the wallet sitting out in the open or any other location. Um, and dollar bills are perfect for this sort of thing because they have identifying marks on them which make them unique. The proofs are built in. Uh, when you're doing playing cards, uh, the idea that something is freely selected is really what you depend on to make it impossible. Otherwise, you need to have it signed in some way where you can sort of duplicate that signature. Um, with the dollar bill, you don't need to do anything. All you, you just have the bill. The bill itself has its own kind of identifying marks, which we can use to our advantage. So how is this done? Um, many of you are probably already aware that you can get dollar bills in series. So if you go to a bank, um, brand new dollar bills coming out of the, um, you know, directly from the mint and going directly into the circulation, which is where you normally are going to run into this, is at a bank, uh, will be in series, meaning that the serial numbers for a sequence of dollar bills will be identical except for the last digit. The last digit will run in sequence, either uh, in numerical order, or there might be some skipped if they've been shuffled out of sequence, but came from the same line. Um, what you want to do is get some of these dollar bills. Uh, a couple ways to do that. You just happen upon them. It happens very often that you just go in and you're making change at a bank and you happen upon a number of bills in series. Uh, my father sent me recently, because he knows I do magic, and he sent me a series of six. So I had six dollar bills here that were all in the same sequential series uh, with uh, one change in the last digit sequentially. Um, or if you just go into the bank and you tell them what you're doing. 
you know, you say, I'm, I'm a magician, I do some magic tricks, and I'm looking for some bills that are in series that I can use uh, for, for magic tricks, and I, I need to have them in series to work. And they'll say, oh, sure, we can, we can do that, and they'll pop some out for you and change a five for five ones or a ten or something like that. So um, you, you can get them at a bank. Sometimes you'll even run into this at a, um, you know, a store especially like a larger store, like a, a department store, like a Walmart or a Target or something like that, where uh, you'll get bills in series because they are replenishing their money from bank deposits and pickups. So they're doing a bank exchange daily, uh, almost daily, uh, and from their own vault, they're taking out these bills that are in sequence. So sometimes you'll run into that there. But anyway, be on the lookout for it. When you get them, there's a, a few ways to accomplish this. One way is to just eliminate the last digit. So in this case, what would be the one right here in the end, um, you would eliminate that number. You would remove it from all of the bills in your series and it would leave a blank spot there. Most people don't know what a serial number looks like. Uh, that they don't, they don't know that it's not supposed to have a blank spot there. That's the easy way to do it, is you just erase it. And we'll talk about that in a moment here. The other option is what I've done is I've erased that in these bills, and I've replaced that number with a 1, so that all of the bills in my series uh, are identical right down to the last digit. There's a 1 there. Okay, so let's talk about how to do this. Um, but before we do that, let's just, if you don't know what's going on here, Obviously, I have one duplicate that's folded up. And what I do is I take the bill and I fold it exactly into at least sixteenths so it has all the creases that my previous bill has. And it, that will imprint in the spectator's mind that the bill is the same bill, right? That it's got all those features to it. So, uh, But what you want to do is just fold it up or stick it into your wallet and you have a duplicate there. And then the second bill, at least in my presentation, should be obvious to you by now, uh, is right here. It's in a thumb tip. So it's just a, a basic disappearance using the uh, typical thumb tip bill switch sort of procedure. Have the thumb tip on the right hand uh, and I take the bill and I fold it in half. Then I fold it uh, in half again, okay, from bottom to top. Sometimes they'll refer to this as hamburger, right? Hot dog, so making it long. Uh, and then another hamburger fold, so you're going this way across. And when you do this, uh, this is when you transfer the thumb tip to the other hand, basic thumb tip um, switch procedure. And then I'm going to fold up into sixteenths, and then this is the moment where I deposit the bill into the thumb tip as I seem to be crushing it down and making it smaller. I pretend to fold it again, and now I've put the uh, bill into the thumb tip on back onto my right hand, and I'm pretty free and clear. So I pretend to fold it down again, and then I use a subtlety. I bring this hand away as if I have the bill just right here. I bring this hand away, and I subtly demonstrate that my hand is empty. Now, this is one of the big no-nos that you wouldn't do in a bill switch. You really never need to show the thumb tip. But in this case, we do need to demonstrate that the hand is empty. So a uh, thumb tip can be shown in this way if it's shown head on from this view. And I like to keep it in shadow with a little bit of finger cover. So I bring my hand away, subtly demonstrating that the hand is empty. And then I can turn the hand down this way. It's unimportant now at this point. And I show that the bill is gone. And I can gesture, keep the hands apart so that you're not comparing thumbs. Uh, but I can gesture that uh, the, the bill is disappeared. Then I reach down, I take the bill out of the um, uh, wallet, and we uh, demonstrate that it is the same bill because you can compare a photograph that somebody took of the uh, bill and compare it to this one. So how do we erase and how do we put uh, the number back on? So for erasing, um, you can erase the ink off of a dollar bill using a regular eraser. Um, if you just erase on it long enough, and I find that the pink erasers work pretty well. Uh, so this kind of variety, they have a very sharp corner edge on it. Also in my package of pink erasers, I have, and I keep this with my magic stuff, I've got a little 
just a little tab of very fine grit sandpaper that I use to kind of finish this off. So uh, I start with the eraser and you can erase to the point where the ink is very, very light. You almost have it all the way gone. And then once I get it to that point, I take that little piece of sandpaper and I very lightly rub it until all of it is, is gone and everything is clean. You do not want to be aggressive with this technique. You want to go very slow. I What I do is I get one side till it's really dull with the eraser and then I go to the other one. And then I go to a different bill and then I come back and then I use the uh, sandpaper and then I get rid of it. Because if you go at it all at once and you get very aggressive and you kind of get focused on it, you can actually start to wear a spot into the bill and the green from the back side of the bill will start to show through. There'll give you a little bit of a shadow there. So you want to be slow. If you can find a pen eraser, so the old Bic pens that used to have the erasable pens, they're harder to find now, but they have an eraser on it that's a little bit more coarse. Those work extremely well for removing ink from dollar bills. Uh, so the pen eraser can do really the whole job if you can find those. But anyway, that's how you get it off. Now the second part is if you want to go there and add a digit back in, uh, these kinds of novelty pens that have multiple colors. So there's a green on there. Uh, that's the best place I have found to find a green ink ballpoint pen. You wanna use a ballpoint pen because the ink is kind of an oily, sticky sort of ink. It, it holds its spot and form without bleeding. It doesn't bleed into the paper, okay? So a ballpoint green pen, um, just a generic green should match. And these kind of novelty pens that have different colors to them, complete with unicorn and rainbows, these work pretty well. This kind of novelty pen that has multiple colors on it, primary colors, the green uh, will work very well for that. And what I do is I just very carefully, freehand, I just make a one. Uh, I put a one on there. It helps if there is another one that you can kind of copy from another bill, just to make sure that you're uh, clear and accurate, but I just very steady on a flat surface. I put a piece of paper underneath so that I can really kind of push that uh, pen down into the paper. I, I just very carefully, I make it. I don't use a ruler. I don't use anything. I just do it freehand and make it nice and clean. Some people have used, uh, with great success in the past, a printer, an inkjet printer. Uh, and what you do is you make a one in a particular kind of font, like a um, Courier New or something like that is very close to this, a Courier type font. Uh, and you print a one onto the page and then you tape around the edges the bill over top of that one. And then if you run it through the printer, and as long as the printer tracks very carefully and does not get off, um, you can print a one onto the various spots on your bill if you want to do it that way. But I found that the ballpoint pen solution works well enough for me. Or just leave it blank. People don't know. People don't know. So that's how you do that. Now the last part is how do you borrow a bill and do this? Well, there's the part I didn't show on here, um, but this is, what, this is how I do it. I say, um, does anybody have a, a bill? I need a bill. Does anybody have a bill for me? It's a one dollar bill. Someone will take out a one dollar bill and what I do is I fold it in half and then I put it in my pocket and I say thanks. Okay, let me show you a trick now, right? And it's a joke, it's a gag, right? All I asked for was does somebody have a one dollar bill? I need a bill. And they give you the bill and you put it in your pocket and you say thanks. And of course the gag is is that you're not taking the bill from them, you need to use the bill for the effect. So what I do is that's when I do the switch I take out the other bill in my pocket, which is my duplicate that has the uh, one on it, that has the replace digit, and then you proceed from there. It is the best bill switch. It's the best way to ring in a borrowed bill of any denomination. You just ring in um, the one that you have that's uh, altered for the one that they gave you, and at the end, you can give them this one. You can give them this one back. If you can manage, if you really want to keep your um, bill that has the altered serial number on it, one thing you can do is try to um, segregate the people uh, that are involved. The person using the phone to take the picture from the person whose bill you're borrowing. You don't want to give the bill back to the person who took the picture because then they can look at the picture later on and they'll see it isn't the same thing. But if you're in a group, right, you can have someone else take the picture or you can do this or whatever. You can have someone write it down 
they could just write down the uh, serial number or something like that. I find that a picture is really good. A picture works really, really well for this because you're using irrefutable technology, right? You're, it's a picture of that dollar bill with all the other parts on it, the uh, other seals, the signature, the series, uh, all these other numbers are, are just a perfect, um, a perfect copy of what you end up with. So just segregate the people. That's another way to do it. Um, or, you know, just give them this bill back. Give them the duplicate bill and they can go and use that and spend it or whatever. And then you're perfectly clean. Again, these are easy to find. You can, if you get a long series of them, you can lose one bill at a time. And then when you run out of bills, just spend the last one on your own and get another series of bills and start over. So um, this, this can be used in a lot of different ways. Uh, one way I've seen this used is uh, to put it inside of a like a Snapple bottle that has this sort of cap on it that pops. What you do is you stick the bill, probably without ink, right? You just make a blank one. Stick the duplicate bill down into the Snapple bottle, put the cap back, or, or rather put the bottle into um, a, a microwave and heat it up nice and hot. Stick the bill in, put the cap on, let it cool down and then that seal will recreate. So what you can do is you pretend as if the Snapple bottle or whatever it is, is a brand new sealed bottle. You pop the cap, it goes pop, like it's never been opened before. You can dump it out, take out the duplicate, and it's amazing. It's, it's just an amazing effect. So a lot of ways to do impossible location with dollar bills uh, using a duplicate bill where you've altered the serial number uh, to make it work. So. Um, that's what I've got for you on the impossible location concept using dollar bills. Good luck with that and happy magicking.